Now let's look at our first story. And uh, Employment and Labor Relations Minister Ignatius Bafwe Wan says government is indeed taking measures to address maltreatment and abuse of workers with the introduction of a health and safety bill before parliament. The bill, according to the minister, will compel employers with more than 20 workers to recruit a health and safety expert. The minister made this known when he paid a visit to the Mawako fast food joint or, of a restaurant where a female staff was allegedly assaulted by her Lebanese supervisor. Two weeks ago, a supervisor at Mawako Fast Food dipped the face of a female worker into blended pepper for working slow. Following the incident, social media has been awash with calls for a boycott of the restaurant. General Manager of Mawako Fast Food, Rich Mongpono, narrated how the incident happened. A lady was blending a pepper. One of our staff, called Evelyn Boachi, was blending a pepper. And uh, in the course of blending and pepper, I don't know whether she wasn't using the blender well. So the guy, the gentleman came, was coming to the kitchen, and then he heard that the blender was making too much acid. It was loaded too much. So uh, out of anger, she tried to collect the blender from her and then tell her that, oh, no, you, you burn the coil. So this is not how you should use the blender. And in the course of doing that, I think he did that with anger. That is what the HR told me. He did that with anger. So in the course of uh, taking the blender from the lady, the pepper splash onto her face. Labor Minister Ignatius Bafwewa has given the company a week to submit its report of what transpired to the Labor Department. We are, we are, we are forwarding a bill to cabinet which, which will ensure, uh, if it is eventually passed by parliament, ensure that in every organization, every, every organization that employs more than 20 people will have to employ what we call a health and safety officer. Mm -hmm. If there were a health and, office, uh, a health and safety mm -hmm. officer in place, perhaps that would have been the first point of call even before going to the clinic. You know what to do. Um, and especially in, the, in in a restaurant environment where you work with gas and, 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 and fire, heat, it is a necessary uh, uh, office that you must create within your environment. As I said, the, the, the labor union, the labor office will do labor audit and then um, will also do inspection of your premises to advise you on what we think is inadequate here. Gender Minister Otiko Afisa Jaba warns of serious consequences for Mawako fast food. Everybody has rights. In the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection will make sure, working with uh, the Ministry of Employment and the TUC, that this bad behavior doesn't happen again. We would go as far as to say that there will be sanctions for people who treat our people badly was we'll close down the entity because this is Ghana at 60. This is Ghana at 60. We cannot be slaves or oppressed in our own country. Being the black star of Africa means we believe in the rule of law, in equal opportunities. And when we are friends with uh, people who come to visit us, non-Ghanaians, they should not take advantage of our hospitality. Ghana is known for Akwaba, our warmth and how we handle strangers. But strangers must understand that we are not weak. Meanwhile, Joy News is learning the supervisor who allegedly meted out the inhumane treatment has formally been charged with assault. For Joy News, Matilda Fumaga. And already, the General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Anthony Yalban, says his outfit is taking measures to address more treatment and abuse of workers by their employers. Dr. Barr tells Joy News how the TUC intends to champion the formation of unions within our workplaces. Okay, the, Doc, it appears this is not the first time such complaints are coming. The, it appears a, a lot of Ghanaian workers are going through some form of abuses or the other at their workplace. What exactly is TUC going to do with this particular issue? Uh, you are right to say this is not the first time. Uh, last year, we had a similar incident in, in Takwadu, where a worker was chained to a container. We dealt with it. 
later the worker was compensated. Now what we are going to do is try first to intensify unionization in the restaurant sector. Because if there's a union, the union, the, what we call the shop steward, will deal with it right there. So we are going to make sure all the workers there are unionized. Employers in some of these restaurants are preventing unionization. I think we should bring an end to that. Another thing we are going to do is to set up a hotline so that if you go through such a thing, call that hotline and let us know about it. And once we know about it, an officer will come and check and draw the attention of the labor officers to it. So I think these two, first, intensify unionization, make sure every worker in Ghana is unionized. Second, we have a hotline, which means that if something happens to you, you can easily call and then you'll get a response from you. Well, let's move away from labor issues. And the president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, has lamented the Convention People's Party, which served as an inspiration to other African countries during the post-independence struggle in the era of colonialism, is about to suffer its extinction. Speaking to journalists in Accra after participating in Ghana's 60th independence anniversary parade on Monday, the 93-year-old revolutionary leader said, the memory of the overthrow of the late Dr. Kwame Nkrumah always brings him to tears. And we bring you a report by Latif Idris. It was supposed to be a brief news conference, but it dragged for close to an hour. President Mugabe, who is openly Nkrumahist, described the 1966 coup as the most cruel act in Ghana's political history. Nkrumah's... Shall I say uh, politics and uh, a, a revolution is still amongst any of you of, of, of our leaders here? The CVP, which was an example to many other organizations in especially in southern africa uh, is about to suffer its extinction when i think of that i, I tend to get tears in my eyes Nkrumah did not deserve that The most cruel. The outgoing chairman of the African Union also lamented the continent has not achieved much because the countries are entrenched in their own biased political approach when dealing among themselves. He, however, commended President Akufuado for a speech he described as deep and unifying. In relation to him personally, I said many more things, of course. To him, I said, yes, here is the man I could re relate to. So, so my question then is what? I could relate to. But later, I said, thank you for making Kuma live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what is that one thing that you found in our president's speech that makes you feel that, yes, you found a relationship between him and the late Kwame Kuma? Well, he has just started on that speech. That speech goes quite deep, deep in history. The history in Kuma used to tell us of his makings. And then reference to Kuma, he was uh, a ring in his speech, and this came as reference to Gruma. But you don't refer to Gruma you don't be, if you don't believe to him. Hmm? And I say that I think I could relate to him. President Mugabe has since left Ghana for his home country, Zimbabwe. 
and um, President Robert Mugabe has since left Ghana. Now so let's look at some other stories. Um, as far as we're concerned, diasporans have been sharing with Join News their contributions uh, they've made in assisting Ghana live the Nkrumah dream. And speaking on the sidelines of a diaspora homecoming in Accra, they told Hano Dami, Ghana has drifted away from the vision of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's development agenda. And that's the reason why Ghana is faced with current economic challenges. The homecoming conference, which coincided with the 60th anniversary of Ghana's independence, is geared towards rebuilding Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's legacy as well as harnessing untouched areas for development. In his speech, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia reminded the diasporans they can serve as a catalyst for Ghana to become self-sustainable through trade and investment. The link to our diaspora is very key to our development because we are all part of the same family, and so if we are able to tap the human resources, the investment resources, the trade resources, uh, science and technology that our brothers and sisters in the diaspora can bring, it is very, very clear that we can make a lot of strides and make up for that separation that took place during slavery and colonialism for the most part. We need to bring back, tie back that link. Minister of Tourism and Creative Arts, Catherine Afeku, challenged the diasporans to help reduce poverty in Ghana by contributing towards developing tourism sites, which will eventually create more jobs. Our tourist site is seriously underdeveloped. I see that as an opportunity and a call to the diaspora to support our aspiration to create jobs, but most of all, to tell our story, the positive story of the Ghanaian. Discussing the legacy of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on the continent, the panelist cited instances that Ghana has drifted from his legacy, offering suggestions on how to build on what he left. Most of us think Nkrumah was only talking about the physical liberation of the people. I suspect he was also talking about the emancipation of the mind of the Africans. We really need to go back to the principle and to the value in order to get uh, uh, emancipation. What we have now got to do is to find areas where we can together contribute. That is what economic integration, ECOWAS, means. Right. So we have to take this legacy and say, how can we deliver it for the 21st century? Thank you, yes, we have to learn the lessons of the past, mm. but we have to build it on a vision that belongs to the young people in this room. For Joy News, my name is Hannah Odami. Mm, I'm talking about vision. There's one academic who has one, an associate professor at the University of Ghana Medical School, Professor Alex Dodu, is suggesting government considers rewarding lecturers based on innovations and not only the academic papers. Professor Dodu believes this will encourage universities to produce research that is tailored to solving societal challenges. He says the time is now ripe for Ghana to harness is uh, expertise in academia in solving problems than resorting to foreign assistance. We'll bring a report by Prince Apia. Well, a uh, story couldn't be, so we'll have to bring you that later. But in the meantime, please make sure you get interactive. And on Facebook, we have Join News on TV. We also have um, a lot more interactivity on our Twitter handle at Join News on TV. As you do all that, we have to take a break because um, uh, we, we have a lot more to talk about. Today is International Women's Day. We'll be joining the simulcast team from the Joy uh, Super Morning Show and Kujo and his team that we bring bringing to you on the half hour. A lot more interactivity with... Um, great uh, interactions with the top women of this country hosting the show today and interviewing guests. What more can we expect on International Women's Day? We have to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you a lot more reviews of the newspapers and look at the online portals. <laughs> 